Aloha and shalom. Welcome to the full moon activation. I'm going to set you down here. And I'm going to begin to shuffle while everybody tunes in. I feel like a little bit shaky. Let's stabilize there. Okay. Make sure you have your water. And while everyone's tuning in, let me know in the comments where in the world you're tuning in from. I'm tuning in as usual from Sedona, Arizona. Where in the world are you? Norway in the house. Where in the world are you? What's up star family? West Virginia in the house. So this is the full moon activation. For those of you who are new to the portal, welcome to the activation portal. We've been doing these activations every week for years. So you'll see a lot of the same people returning, but if you're new, welcome. The full moon activation is all about coming to the, the pinnacle of this cycle, this past lunar cycle that we've been in, okay? So we're at a time where now we're three weeks in. It's not the end. A lot of people think, okay, full moon and it's over and we're on to the next cycle. No, after the full moon, we have to integrate. We have the full moon week where we take in the picture. We take in what's being illuminated and then next week we integrate it. We need a whole week to just take it in before we integrate. You know what I'm saying? You can't just actively integrate. You have to slow down, really take it in so that later when you get to that integration stage, you can do it with your fullest presence. Who's in the house? Kingman, Arizona. Hey, Susie down the road. <laughs> so good to see all my people local and across the world. Hey, hey. Okay, so again, the full moon activation is all about taking in the fullness of the picture, everything being revealed to us right now, just everything we've been going through is becoming so clear and we just wanna sit still and take in all of her beauty. Take in the moon's beauty and sit with everything that's being shown to us next week for the final quarter, we can then integrate all of it. Feel free to share this video now while we're live with your family, your friends, or someone who could use an uplifting message. Maybe somebody's feeling a little down and you want to help them out. Maybe you have a favorite group on Facebook that you want to share this with while we're live. Or again, feel free to wait until the end. The recording will be here on the Facebook wall as well as Instagram and YouTube, Rebecca Magic. Going to go ahead and shuffle the Hebrew deck. For those of you who are new to the portal, it looks like this. Uh, if you're tuning in now, let us know in the comments where in the world you're tuning in from. you archetypes faces of the one for this message that we are about to receive together as one and I'm gonna start with the tarot deck thank you thank you thank you so at this time of the full moon what is the current challenge and gift our focus What's something we're moving away from? As we can feel the season really changing, what is something that has been a stepping stone to get us to this moment, but we're now ready to let go of some of that energy, free up some of that energy? And then our ally of the week. 
Okay, and we begin. Oh, fun little fact. I just got my infant son, his first tarot deck, and it's a little wooden deck, and he pulled the magician. It's his first ever card he pulled himself. So thank you for leading the way, young master. We have, speaking of masters, the magician as our challenge and gift of the week. So the magician is our focus. What does that mean specifically for us right now? <laughs> and it's a spectrum, right? So some of us may be feeling more on the challenging end of things, and some of us may feel like, yeah, I'm really acing this thing. So each card comes with its positives and negatives. Again, it's a spectrum. So some of us right now may be feeling like, man, I'm really disconnected from my power. I'm really disconnected from the elements. I haven't been out in nature in a while. I've lost touch with my own nature. I've kind of become detached from my definitions of the elements and how they relate to me, how I'm one with them. May also feel like I'm disconnected from my purpose. I don't really feel like I've been being that bridge between heaven and earth, right? Look at the picture, look at one hand up, one hand down. So you might have been feeling disconnected from your purpose lately. You might be feeling that right now. You might not be feeling so magical. And on the other end of things, you may be feeling like, wow, I'm really connected to my purpose. I'm really manifesting. I'm really a creator right now. I am so connected to the elements because I am carrying that awareness that I'm one with them. And so due to that awareness, I am tapped in. So it really depends where you're at, right? But keep in mind, whether you're on the really challenging end of the scale or the positive end of the scale, it's still the same archetype. So we are all uniting in this frequency of the magician. So if you're on the more challenging end of things right now, you want to go out into nature, first of all. Remember that the magician comes right after the fool. If you look at the fool card, the art really shows you what the card represents, right? The fool is wearing clothes that are made up of prints that reflect his surroundings. So it's showing that this individual, who is us, right, is connected to all things. Everything is inside. Everything we need is inside. We are one with the elements. And then when we come to the magician, we put that magic into practice. We take action, we make something of that magic. So that's where we're at right now. So if you feel like you're a little disconnected, if you feel like you are just not living your purpose, if you feel disempowered, now is the time to repeat those positive mantras that come with the magician. Oh yes, I remember now, I am one with all things. Everything I need is within me. So if you've been reaching for tools outside of yourself, remember they are all within you. If what you seek you find not without, you shall never find. <laughs> if what you seek you find not within, you shall never find without. As within, so without. As above, so below, right? That's the theme of the magician card. So get back in tune with that energy. If you feel like, man, I'm just disconnected, just reconnect, just with your awareness. Simply by remembering who you are, who we are. You are a star. You are a conduit, you are a bridge to connect the above and below. And so it could be as easy as just sitting there and repeating those positive phrases. And then obviously, doing that daily, you know, maybe when you wake up, when you go to sleep, hint, hint, your brain waves are the most receptive then. If you do it then, you'll really remember. So just remind yourself. And it seems so simple, right? Like no way I'm just gonna tell myself that I'm powerful and I'm going to be. Absolutely. It sounds simple, but it's absolutely powerful. It's absolutely true. That is the key of the mind, the secret of the mind. It seems so simple, but everything is mind. Einstein said, imagination is more important than intelligence. Imagination is more powerful than intelligence. And it's true because everything is mind. So stop, pause, remind yourself of who you are. 
on the one hand, we're saying that seems too simple, but ask yourself, have you even been doing it? Have you even given it a try? No, you've been sitting there using all of your thoughts to think the opposite. I am disconnected. I feel disconnected. I don't have a purpose. I don't know who I am. I'm forgetting. I'm forgetting. I'm forgetting. And so all those thoughts, all those beliefs are opposite of the truth. And all you have to do is neutralize them by reminding yourself of the truth. But you gotta really stick to it. The amount of energy you put into the opposite is the amount of energy you need to put into the truth. And that's how you'll come back to this place of empowerment. So just remind yourself, just pause and fill yourself with the opposite force. Fill yourself with the truth. I am a positive creator. I am here to bring heaven to earth. I am bringing heaven to earth right now through this process of remembering. And if you're on the more gifted side of this spectrum right now, if you're feeling like, man, I've really been acing this, I've been creating, I've been manifesting, I've been connected, I challenge you to connect further. Because right when we think I've got it is when we're gonna get knocked off our horse, right? There's always a deeper level to reach. It's the same thing with any of the archetypes, right? Let's talk about honesty, right? When we feel like, yeah, I've been so honest. I've been on a roll. We get so full of pride, which then pulls us back into vice. And before you know it, we're slipping and we're being dishonest unintentionally. So if you ever feel like you're on top, check yourself, check your pride. And remember, this is a never ending game. This is a never ending test, whatever you want to call it. It's a never ending challenge and gift. So we have to keep going, keep, keep going higher, keep pushing the limit because there really is no limit. So again, if you feel like you've been on top, you've been magically manifesting, you are embodying the magician beautifully. Well, I'm telling you, remember, there's a new level to reach here. Don't be so quick to just pat yourself on the back and in that second while you're patting, you miss another opportunity. So stay alert. Look for as many opportunities as possible to activate the positive magician within yourself and within one another as we interact with one another. Okay, so for example, you may feel so proud of yourself that your, your proud is clouding your hearing, right? And maybe somebody needs your help. Somebody needs to hear a simple word or two to help activate their magician, which is your magician, which is our magician, because we're one. And if you're so busy being proud and you don't hear them, you miss out on that opportunity for our collective magician to activate. We're not just here to activate the archetypes within our individual selves, but we are here to activate those archetypes within the collective mind, subconscious and conscious. So how can we take this as a sign? How can we hear this message and really be present in our positive magician? Remembering we're all one, so helping each other to come to that place. something that's coming out really clearly. I'm going to just go for it. So if you look closely, you'll see these white lilies and they're a sign of purity and you'll see them often in occult art. And for those of you who are super interested in the symbols, I do have a, a 90 minute or so class on the magician. I have a pretty lengthy class on each of the major arcanum cards. It's all recorded. So just direct message me if you're interested in my class on symbolism, which is not included in my books if you already have those. So the white lilies are a symbol of purity. So this is a reminder that if you're wanting to activate your magician further, which we all do, no matter where you're at on the spectrum of this challenge gift, you have to stay in your purity, your purity of purpose, your purity of self. The more pure your intentions, meaning the more you focus your intentions on being for the whole and not just serving the individual self, the more power you will open up to. Life serves life. 
So the lilies are a reminder to us. And you'll see that same symbolism in the white dog on the fool at the fool's feet. That's a loaded symbol, but that's partially it is the purity, right? Also in the white rose in the fool's hand. So purity is a theme throughout the tarot and within occult symbolism in general. So remember, why is it so important? It's so important because there's a science behind it. The more pure we are, and be careful of how you define that word, right? I'm going pure because a lot of people hear that and they go, Ugh. you know, that's, uh, that's not for me. It's for everyone. Purity simply means being connected to our innocence, which we all have. It can never be lost. It's always there no matter what we've done. So uncover that, touch that place, return to that space of innocence within your heart of hearts. Realign your intentions to serve the whole, to serve the one. We're not here to be self-serving. We're here to be self, larger one self-serving. And the more you can be in that frequency of serving that one self, boom, the power opens up. You connect to source and that power is yours to do whatever you want with it. But only if whatever you want is reflecting goodness for the whole. You understand? So the less you're connected to your innocence, the less your intentions are selfless. So the more selfish your intentions are, the less power you're going to have. That's just the science of magic. Okay. Whew, this is awesome. Okay. Seven of swords is what we're moving away from. Seven of swords is what brought us here. And we're also finally ready to move out of it. So for a while now, you may have been feeling like you've been walking on eggshells. You may have been feeling like you are having to tread so carefully, maybe worrying that, oh, I might end up where I was in the past. I don't want to do that again. Uh-oh, I better walk really carefully. I better think really carefully. I better speak really carefully so that I don't recreate what I went through. But there was a lot of darkness with that. There can be a lot of darkness with that. There could be a lot of discomfort with that. I mean, we're walking on eggshells. That's not comfortable, right? It's like a lot of us may have been hyper vigilant. Um, it's time to relax. It's time to relax. Yes, being cautious is an important part of the process. Yes, being cautious is what got us to this point. We were mindful, thoughtful, careful, right? And so, yes, we came to this blessed point now of the magician, coming back to our, our power. We carefully treaded to get to where we are now. But you're here now. Relax. Let go. Because we're at a stage, we're being shown, we're at a stage right now where we can let go of that. We can let go of that for a moment. We don't have to be so anxious and looking over our shoulder. There's no one there anyway. It's all one. We're all one. There's a time and a place to behave this way, right? Maybe when you're just coming out of a funky situation and you don't want to step, take a step backwards. You want to move forward. But here we are now. And so we're being given this message. It's okay. Relax. Keep in mind, too, that when you move from the seven to the eight of swords, Luke, you're going to know this one well, the eight of swords is the woman bound up loosely and she has swords all around her. And what that represents is being stuck, but we're the only one in the way. Being stuck, but we have everything we need within us to set ourselves free. So you can see that from the seven, treading carefully, we're now here. It's like we're not going to get stuck as long as we remember our power. We don't have to worry about that. If we remember our power and what we're here to do, then we'll remember we have everything we need within us and we won't again become stuck. Also, that eight that comes after the seven is a woman speaking to our feminine side, speaking to our intuition and our receptivity. Okay, so how, pay attention to how you may have been shutting down your intuition because of this hyper vigilance, let go, trust you're where you're meant to be, remember your purpose, and open up that channel to your intuition yet again. You cannot be in that relaxed, intuitive, receptive, feminine polarity that we all have, obviously. I'm not just speaking to women, I'm speaking to everyone. We cannot be in that most receptive state in our most in our most powerful feminine 
if we're hypervigilant, we're closed up then, we're anxious, our energy is being occupied by this tenseness, this discomfort. We need to let that go and relax and trust. And from there, we can allow that power to come through to do what we need to do. And the Hebrew ally of the week is the Hebrew letter He. You can Google it, H-E-I. There are some different spellings of it, it's phonetics. So Hebrew letter He, and remember it's flipped because we're on a camera. And it's the fifth letter of the alphabet, of the Hebrew alphabet. And the hieroglyphic symbol is a man with his hands up like this. Praising, right? Pointing up remembering the most hey high the most hey holy it's also connected to arcanum five in the tarot which is the hey hierophant which is the ha heart's compass so the most high the most holy frequency lives inside of the heart you are the hierophant you are the teacher because the teacher is within you the teacher and the student are one so why is this the ally of the week it's reminding us the teacher is within you all that's holy hey praise be all that is holy all that is is within you and so if you remember that truly if you remember all that is holy and how it is within all things, including yourself in your heart of hearts, hey, <laughs> then you easily will ace the current challenge, reactivating your power, remembering who you are and what you came here to do. If you remember the divine, what is holy, you remember the divine will and you align your will with that. Check it out. It's like he's pointing to the hay, pointing to the holy, pointing to the divine. You are here to be a channel for that, right? It's like if we re truly remember what is holy and we remember the will of that holy one, we instantly remember that we are one with this divine energy. And we touch that source with our awareness first. We touch that source. We allow it in simply by activating it with our remembrance, with our awareness and we allow it to move through us and we make something of it. We bring heaven, hey, <laughs> to earth. Okay, so that's why this is the ally, right? The Hebrew deck is much smaller than the tarot deck. You can think of it as like just the major arcanum, right? It has the 22 letters. And out of just that small collection, this one comes up for a reason because it's the most important one. If only we remember this card from the activation, the rest will be activated in turn. The rest will follow. Remember the hey, the heart, the holy. When you remember that one, you remember you're a part of it and you know what you came here to do and you're going to do something with it. Action upon that divine plan. Okay? So we can let go of this treading so carefully. We're wasting all of our energy on like trying to micromanage everything and, and walk on eggshells. Okay, we needed to do that. There was a time and a place, but we're here now. We can relax. We have to relax, actually, if we want to receive the intuitive guidance that we need to do the work we came here to do. Relax, chill. And if you find that you can't relax and you keep looking over your shoulder, we are in the days of awe for those of you who are celebrating Chag Sameach. Um, this is a very potent time for everyone. It's not just for Jewish people. Anyone can access these energies because they're just natural energies, natural cycles that we're all a part of. And we're at this time right now where we've been focusing on forgiveness we, uh, of self and one another and actually taking actions, not just like in our heads, right? But taking actions, apologizing, making things right, making amends. So follow suit, y'all. Now is a great time as the season changes to seek forgiveness from yourself from one another make your apologies make amends make things right bring the energy back into balance because if you don't you are going to find it very difficult to let go of this energy and move forward into your magic 
You're gonna feel weighed down. It's like every bit of guilt and anxiety is like a, a ball and chain on your ankle. So do the best you can do. Make the best efforts you can make at forgiving yourself, forgiving others, asking for forgiveness from others, and like really ask. Don't just say, I'm sorry, right? We all know that sorry isn't enough. You have to show that you're sorry by making things right, by making amends. The universe doesn't care about your sorry. Energy is energy, energy is frequency, vibration. Do something to neutralize that. Because if you don't, you are going to feel weighed down. You're gonna keep looking over your shoulder out of guilt, out of fear, out of shame, because you're going your subconscious self is going, uh-oh, where's that karma? Uh-oh, uh-oh, any second now I'm gonna slip. Any second, I'm gonna be knocked off of this horse. And to be that magician and to perform that magic you came here to perform, which is to bring heaven to earth, you need to be so confident in yourself. You need to be sovereign. You need to be believing in yourself and believing in the one, believing in one another. And you can't stay in that confident, trusting, positive, empowered space if you got all these balls and chains, if you got all this guilt, all this fear, all this shame. Because you feel that karma on its way because it's real so do what you have to do now to make it right to make it light to make yourself feel free so that you can actually move forward and be that magician and remember pride's going to get in the way your ego is going to say things like but you were right in that situation but you are right but that person was wrong but we don't apologize because we're too powerful for that or whatever it is, right? Don't listen. Don't listen. Apologies are important. Apologies and making amends and fixing things, it's all necessary for your growth. So you could sit there thinking you're all too powerful to say sorry and really you're actually not powerful at all because of your pride and your being in that frequency of vice. Remember, you're then cut off from the magic. Because pride is not a reflection of that life-serving life thing we just spoke about. Pride is not going to serve anyone. Ego is not going to serve the whole. It's there for a reason. Yes, it's there for our survival. Yes, it's there for us to overcome and evolve as well. Okay, so remember, do what you have to do to get yourself in a space of forgiveness, in a space of compassion, vulnerability, and from there, you can really lighten your load and feel like a good person. Because you have to know you're worthy of the magic in order to be an expression of it, in order to receive it, and in order to perform it. You need to know that you are worthy. And there is some part of you deep inside that always knows the truth, no matter how many veils are over it. And that little part inside, that little voice within that knows the truth, is going to nag you until you listen. It's going to hold you back until you make a change. So if you wanna be truly powerful, you need to be truly compassionate. You need to be truly connected to the one. The degree to which you are connected to the one is the degree to which you will be powerful because that power is not just yours, it's yours, it's ours, it's of the one. So, I know I have a video somewhere on my YouTube channel, I'll try to find it, and it's all about how to access the light of wisdom through being compassionate. They're connected. Without loving kindness, you cannot receive the light of wisdom. There is a science to this. There's a science to this, and it's been known since ancient times. And this information is becoming available again. It's everywhere. So I'll, I'll share that video after this activation for those of you who are interested. So it's time for us to let go, do whatever we need to do to let go, meaning forgive, apologize, um, ask for forgiveness, all those things we just talked about in order to get yourself to a place where you can actually relax and trust and be the magician that you came here to be. Remember the most high, most holy in your hey, hey, hey heart praise. And when you remember that, you remember yourself because you're one with that. And you remember what you came here to do for that one that you are a part of. Ta -da!
Thank you guys for being a part of this activation and bringing in this message with me. I have a little message for you all who've managed to stay until this point. I don't know how long we've been sitting here, but um, for those still listening, I'm not going to be doing the activations anymore every single week. I'm thinking I'm going to do them at the new moon and full moon, or I might just pick one or the other. Feel free to share your input. You can direct message me. You can leave a comment. What would you rather receive an activation at the time of the new moon or full moon? When do you need it most? Remember, new moon is like we're receiving a message for what lies ahead. Full moon is we're receiving some confirmation for what we've been receiving. I'm no longer going to be doing the first quarter and final quarter. Yes, they are equally important parts of the process, but I'm at a time in my life where this is what uh, is realistic for me. So it would be awesome to get a private reading one-on-one -on -one if you've been wanting one somewhere in that process where I would have been giving an activation. You need a little extra guidance. I'm available for personal readings. Um, I'm already seeing some of you giving feedback. Awesome. Cool. We'll see. I may go for both. Not sure yet. I'll let y'all know. And for those of you who have been enjoying my books, thank you. I am shipping some of them out on Monday. So if you've been waiting for a book, hang tight. They're coming. I also have my classes available, my video classes on the Major Arcanum. So feel free to ask about those. Please, if you liked this activation or you've been enjoying the activations at any point, if you would be so kind as to write me a review, I would love it. You can email it to me, info at royalpathtarot.com, or you can leave the review yourself here at facebook.com slash royalpathtarot. I want to hear from you. And thank you to everybody who's been donating. You know who you are. I am so grateful for your donations. It's a huge help to me and um, just really a beautiful way to show your gratitude. So thank you. If you're wanting to donate, you can donate on Venmo, Rebecca-Magic with a CK. You can see how it's spelled here. Um, I also have other links on Royal Pen. Oh, there we are. So you can check them out on my wall. Thank you for <laughs> Lots of things going on on my phone all of a sudden. So thank you guys so much. I love you. Please share this message with someone who could use it. I will see you not next week for the final quarter, but I'll see you soon. Stay tuned to my page. I'll be sharing other videos and fun things like that on facebook.com slash royalpathtarot. Aloha.